Sometimes things don't always heal exactly as planned, as our next patient found out. We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the Ultramobile for his first patient. And I'll also be out in the park answering your burning questions. That's amazing! At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is 10-year-old Anna with a funny finger. That's amazing! Seems perfectly obvious why you've come to the Ultramobile. That's nothing. Look at my little finger. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Looks to me like a case of my little finger's even more amazing than the trick I can do with my other finger's itis. Wow. <laughs> Tell me about your little finger, Anna. It started when I was five years old. My mum told me to open the door and it, the door just, like, hit it and it cracked. Painful. Mm -hmm. So what happened then? The doctor put this um, straight thing on me to make it, like, stay straight, but it didn't work. So, Anna, I want to have a closer look at your finger. Can you open the eyelid on the ouch cam? Now, get it as straight as you can. Uh, uh, uh. That's all you can do, is it? Yeah. So the doctor used something called a splint, and the splint is meant to hold a broken bone straight until it mends. And in your case, the splint didn't work. It's nothing to worry about. Does the finger work well for you, or would you prefer to have it straightened out? It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, that's really good. Well, I have to do an operation when I go old, older. In the future, if you started to get ache in the joints or you did a job where you needed to do something very precise with your left hand, at that point, you might think about doing an operation. And it certainly is possible to straighten out that finger. Well, thank you very much for coming to the Ouchmobile. You're welcome. Time to get out of the Ouchmobile and into the park. I want to see if anyone's got any questions for me. Let's go out and about. Why does uh, your belly rumble when you're hungry? In fact, it can rumble at any time. But when you're eating, you swallow bits of air. And when you're digesting food, it actually makes gas. And the rumbling is the bubbles bubbling up through the stuff you've eaten. And the name is Borobarygmi. So the next time you're getting rumbling, you can go, oh, I've just got a bit of Borobarygmi going on. <laughs> Back at the Ultramobile, the next case is in the waiting room. Can I have the next patient, please? It's 12-year-old Carnell with an extraordinary eye. So, Carnell, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile? Uh, when I drink, my eye sort of wanders off. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of when I drink, my eye sort of wanders off itis. I know what you mean. Now, tell me more about that. It's called Marcus Gunn syndrome. Now, that is a very, very rare syndrome indeed. So, in all the things ever published about medicine, there are only 300 people reported to have had it. Can you open the eye? on the ouch cam. Now, can you give us a demonstration of what happens? I can't see it. Now, can you try wiggling your jaw from side to side like that? It's not easy to see, but Carnell's eyelid is twitching from side to side. That's because the bit of his brain that's making his jaw move is also telling his eyelid to move. And does it affect your life at all? No, not really, because not much people notice it. As a doctor, it is very interesting to see someone with a syndrome this rare. Carnell, thank you very much for coming and showing us your amazing eye in the Ouchmobile. It's OK, thank you, Dr Zan. Job done for today. Clinic closed. <laughs> I'm hitting the wards with my Ouch Bleeper because we've brought Ouch and About inside the hospital. Wow! And I'm hitting the streets to answer your medical mysteries. In the hospital, Chris has his first call. It's from Dan, who has a rash all over his body. So what's your question? My question is, what makes the blood vessels burst in her neck, shunline, purpura? Come again? What's the diagnosis, Doc? That sounds to me like a case of, I want to know what makes the blood vessels burst in Henoch shunline purpura itis. <laughs> That's a right mouthful. Do you have Henoch shunline purpura? Yes. And is that why you've got that rash? Yes. First of all, let's have a little look. Sure. Do you want to drive the ouch cam? Hmm. So looking here, we can see that the blood vessels have leaked a bit of blood under the skin. That's a good one, though. That's a really good one, isn't it? But why does Henoch Schoenlein purpura make this happen? Well, this is caused by Dan's own immune system 
attacking his blood vessels. The lining of the blood vessels becomes inflamed and those blood vessels become leaky. Yeah. Now, Henoch Schonlein purpura, as weird as it sounds, is actually very, very common. Most of the time, it gets better with either no treatment or a short course of drugs called steroids. Okay, Dan, well, you have been an absolute star. Would you like an Operation Out sticker? Yes, please. Thanks, Daniel. I'm out and about on the street, and I think someone has a question for me. Why do you cry? Why do you cry? That is a really, really good question. The main thing about crying is that you're making signals to other people that say you're upset. Your tear ducts are making tears. The tears also run inside your nose, down a thing called your nasolacrimal duct, which means your nose tear duct. And so you get a runny nose, and then you're sobbing as well. And we have bits of our brain that are very good at seeing when people are upset. And then we go and help. So when you're crying, do people help you? Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have a cry. I have a bit of a cry now and then as well. Usually when Dr Chris is being mean to me, or if I can't find Mr Grumbles. Thanks very much, Benjamin. Goodbye. Oi, Chris! No sleeping on the job. You've got another question. <laughs> It's from nine-year-old Dolly. How do you do? Bye. What's your question? How does my infusion pump work? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of how does my infusion pump work itis. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Why are you in hospital? Because I've got a short bowel syndrome. What does that make it difficult for you to do? Absorb food properly. So, how does Dolly absorb food? Into my heart. Into your heart? Dolly has a tube that goes straight into her heart. This allows a special nutrient-packed food to be put directly into her bloodstream with the help of an infusion pump. So how does it work? This is how much food Dolly needs for 12 hours. But obviously, she can't have it all at once. So we trickle it from a tube here down into the infusion pump. And then if you look here, when that moves, it's like a pair of fingers squeezing food along the tube, a bit like squeezing toothpaste. So the infusion pump allows a really controlled amount to go into Dolly's heart. So you can eat stuff with your mouth, can't you, as well? You just can't eat very much. What's your favorite food? Roast dinner. <laughs> Roast dinner? OK, well, you're not alone there, Dolly. I always have tomato ketchup with my potatoes. <laughs> uh, I'm with you, Dolly. I think you've earned yourself an Operation Out sticker. Good job. Bye. Bye. Job done for today. Clinic closed. We're both ouch and about. I'm hitting the wards with my ouch bleeper. Have you got a question for me? Uh. And I'm hitting the streets to answer your medical mysteries. At the hospital, Zahn's busily playing tennis. I'm about to beat Dr Chris's record. 97, 98, 99... Oh, no, a bleep! Ah! You'll never beat my record. <laughs> Get to your first call. It's from Mohammed, who was rushed to hospital after he fell onto some railings. Hi, Mohammed. How are you? Good. Now, have you got a question for me? How does my windpipe work? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of, I'm Mohammed and I want to know how my windpipe works itis. That's a mouthful. The medical name for your windpipe is your trachea, and it runs from the back of your throat down and splits in half and goes into each of your two lungs. Now, the windpipe has one very important job. It has to not collapse. So your windpipe is made up of a tough stuff called collagen with cartilage rings, and the cartilage rings keep it open and stop it collapsing. So even if you squeeze your throat a little bit, you can't collapse your windpipe, so you've always got air going into your body. You did more than push on it, didn't you, Mohammed? I mean, you actually jabbed a hole in it with a fence. It hit my throat, under my throat, then I had a small hole. Now, what kind of ambulance did you get? I didn't get an ambulance. I got a helicopter. You got a helicopter? Yeah. Do you know what they did in hospital then? Stitched me. And so now the hole's mended, you've got a bit of a plaster on there. Yeah. And how are you feeling? A little bit good. Well, you have done a brilliant job and you have earned an Operation Ouch sticker. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Meanwhile, I'm out and about on the street. Dr Chris, I've got a question for you. Why does brain work and how, why do you have thoughts? How does the brain work and why do we have thoughts? 
That might be the hardest question it's possible to ask anyone. What your brain does is it's a way of taking in information from all your senses, so from your eyes and your ears and your skin and your mouth, and then your brain decides what to do with that information and controls your body. But why do we have thoughts? No one knows the answer to. So to answer that question, you are going to have to become a cognitive neuroscientist. Do you think you could do that? Yes, I'll try. You'll try. Good for you. Here you go. Back with Zand, another call's come in. It's from Kate Lou and Ella, who are visiting their sister in hospital. Hi, Kate Lou. Hi, Ella. How are you doing? Good. Have you got questions for me? How come I've got a bigger mouth than my sister? What's your question? How come I've got X men and my sister hasn't? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I want to know why I've got a bigger mouth than my sister, and my sister wants to know why she's got X men. I don't like this. Now that's a record. Let's start with your big mouth. Show me how big your mouth is. Wow, that is a big mouth. So everyone has different sized mouths, and most of that is about your genes. Everyone gets a slightly different combination of your genes, but even Dr. Chris and I, who have the same genes, we should be the same in everything. Actually, one of us would have a slightly bigger mouth. I just don't know which. OK, eczema. Why have you got eczema and your sister doesn't? Well, some bits of eczema are genetic, but you don't have all the same genes as your sister. You've got a few different ones. But also, everyone grows up in a slightly different way. So all the other things in the environment that cause eczema, like which germs you're exposed to and what things live on your body, they'll all be a little bit different from your sister as well. Have I answered your questions? Yeah. You have both earned Operation Ouch stickers. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Job done for today. Clinic closed. Did you know every minute you lose about 30 to 40,000 dead skin cells off the surface of your skin? Wow. <laughs> We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Chris is preparing the Ouchmobile for his first patient. And Zand is out in the park to answer your burning questions. That's amazing. Next patient, please. Hello, Dr Chris. First in is 12-year-old Arthur, who wants his scalp seen. So, Arthur, what has brought you to the Ouchmobile today? I have some dry, flaky patches of skin on my scalp and over my body. What's the diagnosis, Doc? So this sounds like a classic case. If I have some dry, flaky patches of skin around my scalp and all over my body, itis. Couldn't have put it better myself. OK, Arthur, do you want to open up the eyelid? Now, lean forward. So you've got this flaky skin there, and then you can see some of the flakes of skin are actually in your hair. So Arthur's got this really common condition called psoriasis. And psoriasis is where your body makes too many skin cells at particular points, which is why they start flaking off. How do psoriasis come about? So it's a little bit genetic, so you get it a bit from your mum and dad. Yes. But it's partly to do with your body having an increased amount of inflammation at those sites, so you get too many skin cells, which is where you have to brush them off and moisturise them. OK. Arthur, thank you very much for bringing in your psoriasis to see me. I'm out and about. Let's see if anyone's got any questions for me. Why is the Veruca so infectious? Verrucas are designed to be infectious. That's right, Zand. Viruses want to spread and take over the world. They get on your feet and then they kill the cells in your feet and get them to spread little bits of virus all over the floor and then other people pick them up on their feet. They ride around in swimming pools, changing room floors, things like that. So if you've got a Veruca, cover your foot when you go to the swimming pool and if you haven't got a Veruca, then make sure you don't get one by keeping your feet clean. Chris is back at the Ouchmobile. Next patient, please. And next into the clinic is nine-year-old Jessica. So, Jessica, what brings you to the Ouchmobile today? Well, my joints are very floppy and I've got pseudochondroplasia. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a classic case of my joints are really floppy and I've got pseudoachondroplasia-itis. Huh, easy for you to say. <laughs> so let's have a look. Do you want to open the eye? I'll give you a hand. So can you show us on the Ouch cam your floppy joints? <laughs> oh, wow, OK, yeah, so they're very floppy, aren't they? I can bend my hand back can to my wrist. Back. Wow! 
So you said you've got this thing called pseudoachondroplasia. So can yeah. you show us what are the other things that, that go with that? Um, well, I'm shorter than all my friends. In fact, if I stand next to you, <laughs> that will be very obvious, <laughs> won't it? Because you're about half my height. And, you, and, and most nine-year-olds would be taller, wouldn't they? Yeah. OK. So pseudoachondroplasia is a, is a medical condition that makes you short because your bones don't grow properly. And that's because there's a problem with one of the genes for this protein called collagen. Collagen's in your joints and it makes your ears, it makes all the soft, bristly bits of your body. What makes my joints, like, bend back really far? I think it's because the way the collagen is produced actually kills some of the bone cells while they would normally be growing. So all of that makes your joints more flexible. Is there anything cool about having pseudoachondroplasia? Yeah. Well, when I was younger, me and my friends liked to play hide and seek, so I could always hide in smaller places. So you can win any game of hide and yeah. seek because you can get into the smallest place. Yeah. OK, so Jessica, thank you very much for coming in with your pseudoachondroplasia. Thank you very much, Dr Chris. That is a real pleasure. Job done for today. Clinic closed. Ouch! <laughs>